I'm Eleni, and I'm here to um, talk about the reaction that we have to the information that Amazon used AI or an algorithm to fire people. So we don't know if this is true or not. We're on the outside, but let's say it's true. And you know, The Verge got some documents um, insinuating that it's true. Uh, but let's see how it affects the team culture. Now I wrote here AI's effect. And what I mean by that in this video is using AI or artificial intelligence, an algorithm to affect people's livelihood, right? Their, their, their jobs, okay? So that's what I mean, not saying that all AI is bad, but looking at how it affects the team culture. Now let's look at the triad thought, feeling, behavior, mindset, or like a pictorial view of what the mindset is in reaction to having some people somewhere being fired because of metrics that a computer, an algorithm identifies and then makes a conclusion. So what this insinuates and assumes is that people are supposed to behave in the same way as computers. So it's mechanizing humans and if, let's say, someone has a stomach ache that morning and they're slightly slower and the algorithm sees this, and let's say somebody has ulcers, so they're slightly off for a long period of time and then they're fired, but if we were talking to them, we'd say, okay, we won't want to fire someone who has an ulcer. That doesn't make sense. We would do something else. But AI is now being the one deciding. There's no humanity in it, so there's no discussion, which creates a lot of fear, anxiety, and powerlessness. There's an enormous amount of research, much of which, which is led by Jeffrey Pfeffer out of Stanford, saying that the more powerless we feel, the less we can be creative, collaborative, smart, perform, you know, have pro perform well and be productive. Now let's look at the whole, the whole triad. So when I'm scared, anxious, and powerless, I wonder what metrics are they using? What if uh, I could be next? I could be the one who's fired next. What if the computer is making an error? Or what if my, uh, my error or my slowness, let's say, because they were firing people within their warehouse, what if it was because of something else that I couldn't control? So it's creating a lot of powerlessness. And then people are defensive, tentative, and reactive. And this type of triad or mindset then creates a focus on self-safety, like what could I do to manipulate, trick, or you know, make it seem like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, whether I'm doing it or not. But it's also looking at how can I protect myself instead of looking at how can I do my best in this, in this position, in this role. Lower productivity, lower pr productivity, and the increased errors. So you might think, well, who cares? They're using it in, a, in an assembly line. They want people to act like robots. They couldn't care less if they're creative. Um, so who cares? But it does affect productivity and error rates. So we should not be surprised if we start seeing error rates go up the more AI is used to fire people because it makes them, puts them in this state. Now, let's say we work at Amazon, or let's say we're customers of Amazon, but even uh, employees, and we hear that this is happening in some parts of the company. Whether it's true or not, we don't really know. We, the company didn't confirm, but this is also going to spread throughout the entire company because if they're gonna use this AI somewhere, they're gonna start using it everywhere. That would be the assumption because the mind always goes to the worst. Why? because we are wired to be careful, to look at danger and take care of danger, adapt to it, and then you know be feel safe. So we're always gonna look at what could be problematic for us or dangerous or scary. And it's not that we're negative and we're you know miserable people or pessimistic people. We have a natural negative bias just out of, you know, to keep us safe. Now that then starts everyone's defensiveness and maybe even paranoid behavior because they start looking at what could be next for them. 
And so in the end, while this might sound like it's creating a lot of efficiencies, maybe it reduces one person's uh, job, maybe it helps some people in the human resources group not have to fire people personally, because nobody likes to do that, but it really creates a lot of deleterious outcomes for people, of course, who were fired and others who come in their place. Imagine being interviewed for, so, for a job that the, the last person was fired by a computer. And imagine going into a company where this kind of uh, behavior is occurring. What could that do to the culture? So if we only care about productivity and errors, we would worry about this. If we care about the team culture and we're starting to think about how to use team culture as a comparative advantage to attract the best talent and retain the best talent, then we also have to take care of it. Not necessarily only in the company that uses it, but in all companies because we have to start what this happens, what this is doing is it creates fear in everybody saying, is this next in my company? Is this next in a trend? Am I always being watched? What is happening? And so people are starting to become even more and more anxious. And so even if you lead and if you're a team member in a company that may not use this specifically, you would, it would behoove you to talk to your team and say, you know, how do we measure ourselves and each other? How do we talk about what works and what doesn't? What would do we do in a, in a case of failure? How would we overcome something? And so that people start to know how am I being measured? not only in the performance review that might come once or twice a year, but on a daily and weekly basis as to what can we focus on instead of focus on self-preservation, focus on the issues at hand.